Hi, I'm testing my new green screen setup, and what better way to test it than just to make another quick tutorial. And I wanted to make a quick one on solids. The reason for that is because I've seen a lot of questions lately on Discord and, uh, and the forums, so I just thought I'd explain it a bit. You see, a solid is what you need to use these guys, which are called the solid tools. And a lot of you people are confused about these tools because the minute they start using it, they get the prompt that this is not a solid and they don't know how to fix it. So I'm gonna show you what a solid is and uh, how you can keep it a solid and how you can inspect it. So, if I make a, a box like this, which I just made a plane and push it up, then this is a solid. The reason I know that is because it has, well, six sides, which are all closed. It has no straight lines. It has no faces inside and uh, it has no uh, faces facing the wrong way and it is one giant cube so if i was to put this into a 3d printer it would print a cube perfect but the minute you have a hole here or missing a face then it's no longer a solid why you ask well all of these planes are impossibly small or thin they are um, in the cosmos, in a two-dimensional plane, that doesn't exist in the real world because they have no thickness. So if you put this into a 3D printer, it wouldn't really print anything because it wouldn't really have any mass. That's why you have two sides on every uh, plane here, is because it shows the inside and the outside. And if you can see the inside from the outside, it's not a solid. So to fix that, if you have parallel lines like this, you just draw a line, along one side, we call that healing, and it will fix that hole. So why would you want a solid uh, in SketchUp? You don't need a solid. You can actually work just in planes and lines, that's fine. But if you want to use the solid tools, they have to be solids. Let me show you what, a, what, what they do. I'm gonna quickly make like a, a little uh, orb here. This too is also a solid. So I'm gonna group these together. Not together, but uh, individually. So they're two different objects which both are solids. If I, push, if I push this into this cube here, then I can use the different metrics that you find up here. If I choose both of them and choose the outer shell, they will join into one object. And what do you mean one object? Why can't I just group them? Well, if you go inside, you will see that it has no geometry inside the object. So it's one big solid, which you all, again, can put into a 3D printer. If you use the other one here, which is called trim, then you will use this as essentially a cookie cutter to cut a, cut a hole in this uh, cube. So I'm gonna press this trim here, and I'm gonna press the cube, and then I can move my ball around, and we can press uh, trim again, uh, trim, and then press on the cube, and we can move the ball again. You can even scale it if you want. Let's say we want to make a cheese, so we want some small holes as well. So I'm gonna do a trim of that, and so forth. And this is really helpful for making some intricate uh, designs when it comes to modeling, like this. If you have like an oval uh, wall that you wanna have a window in, you can't really push and pull, then you have to use the solid tools to make that hole. Let's say we have uh, like a silo, like this. And we want to create an opening in one end and of course you can try and just create all the polygons but let's just simply make this into a group and then we can make a window that we want to put in here so instead of making the window I'm actually making the cookie cutter shape so I'm going to group this and I'm going to put that in the place where it's supposed to be I'm gonna move it inside my object here. And what I need to make sure is that every end is actually pointing out. And I don't really have to think about anything more than this, once again. You, I'm not gonna use this again, so this time I can actually use the subtract. And you start off, how to use this, you can, also, you can also select nothing. If I don't select anything and then press subtract, I can press on the first object and then the second object, and the first object will be your cookie cutter. And there you have a window in oval shape. Pretty cool, huh? But a lot of times we make some super complex shapes that are kind of hard to make sure that they are 
solids. Select everything, deselect the plane, and then follow me, press on this. This is a complex shape. But if I group this together, and then let's say I want uh, this to be like this weird string cheese, I can take that, and then we can uh, trim from that, and then you get like this little symbol, not a solid, as you can see on the text uh, right there. So how do you fix that? Well, you can manually just start inspecting your model. When you're, what you're looking for is stray edges. You want uh, things that aren't really connecting, like these ones, uh, to be fixed. And uh, normally, when using like the Follow Me tool, you always have like these inside faces and faces that really don't connect right because the geometry doesn't really match up. So you get some problems here and there. But there is actually a really easy way to figure out what's wrong with your model. And that's by downloading TomToms solid inspector and this is actually included in the web version as a default now but it but it's also free for everyone else who has the pro version if you go to window and go to extension warehouse where is it extension warehouse here you will actually find it really quickly in the feature and if it's not there you just search for the solid inspector it's a really handy tool and what that does is if i mark this and then press the solid inspector I'll get this little window right here that tells me I've got three surface borders in here, which means there are three holes in here. And you can't really fix that uh, by default. So what I have to do then is just press tab and it will zoom into that area and tell me here's the problem. Okay. Now the first thing I can do is actually just go back to the black arrow and just click into my group, mark everything, right click and then go intersect faces with selection that will create extra lines where uh, planes are actually intersecting which is kind of the problem right here so that should fix some of it and let's go again to this and now it has three surface border and uh, three internal face edges interesting so once again press tab and then we can go into our model and figure out where's the problem here's the problem okay then we can oh, go into our model like this and then we simply use our eraser and we fix whatever is wrong. And you just go one by one through all of these. Let's go again. And now it just has internal faces. And an internal face, let me press tab again so you can see what it is, is a face inside our model. And a face inside our model won't really work when we're printing this or pushing this into other 3D programs. They will simply be in the way. But one thing which is really nice with TomTom, Tom, now that we actually fix some of the surface borders, it just has the button fix. And then, all of a sudden, everything is shiny and this is now a solid. Which you can use, like all these other shapes. So let's take this ball, move it into our little thing here. And do the the trim and then trim that then we can move the ball over to the other side same thing trim and then trim that it is simply that easy other things that will happen when you start making models like this is that you get a couple of things you will get stray lines because you're always making some adjustments here and there and in internal faces happens a lot especially if you're push pulling something i'm going to push pull that and sometimes we mistakenly do that make a copy of it and we get this line and we don't really think about it but that is actually now an inside border like this and also what happens a lot which i see a lot in 3d warehouse is that a lot of people don't give a damn about reversed faces which is also a big problem when it comes to solids. But all of these things, the solid inspector will fix for you automatically, fix all, which is nice. So again, extension manager, and there you will get TomTom's solid inspector tool. And one day I'll also make a tutorial on doing this on the web version, but you can find it if you're just looking it's way uh, uh, down the bottom there. And that should make your life a lot 
easier. Using the solid tools to make things is super powerful. But also, this is also very handy when you're making 3D printed things to make sure that your model is ready for 3D printing or exporting to things like Blender, Unreal, and stuff like that if you want this to be a physical object. Thank you guys so much for watching. This probably became a lot longer than I intended, but hopefully you learned something about solids and uh, got a bit less confused about some things. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments section and I will get to them as fast as I can. And uh, thank you guys again for watching. Remember to like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I guess I'll talk to you next time.